Hello, my name is Joe, and welcome to another edition of Joe's Linux Channel. Uh, before we go any further, let me point out that nothing that you see here is sponsored by anybody. Well, other than me. Um, I had no aff affiliation with System76 or Newegg. I just happen to be commenting on what they have available, and that's that. It's just my personal opinion based on my own experiences. Now recently, I decided I needed a laptop. I travel a bit, and I need to be able to update, you know, documents, uh, spreadsheets, databases, um, you know, do some little uh, light web programming, you know, update my blogs. Some of this is things that you can do from a tablet, but not very comfortably when you're doing all the custom code and other stuff that I like to do. You know, for that, you really need a keyboard. There are keyboards available for tablets, but Again, there are some types of things, you know, like office applications and, and programming that get a little iffy in the Android environment. It's just, you know, they, they, uh, they're targeted towards a different audience rather than power users. And um, I had tried to use a Chromebook for that purpose. Uh, if you've never seen them, Chromebooks are basically like really cheap laptops. But they come with the Chrome OS, unfortunately which is basically the Chrome browser almost as an operating system. So if you love the Chrome browser and you can do everything you want in the Chrome browser, the Chromebook is perfect for you. <laughs> Not so great if you want to do programming and, and some other stuff. So Now you can, and I've done this, um, wipe out the Chrome operating system and install Linux, but you are constrained to the hardware that came on that device. So you know, you have to be able to run software that'll run on an ARM processor. You have to be fine with the amount of storage it has. Mine, mine's a first generation Samsung Chromebook, so the storage is a 10 gigabyte SSD and that is it. Um, anything more than that and I'm basically out of luck. So I thought to myself, it's finally time to get a laptop, but I have no interest in a Windows laptop. After all, this is the Linux channel. So I went looking and I came across System76. A lot of people have a lot of nice things to say about System76. They are a repackager. They'll take uh, laptops that other companies produce, rebrand them, and then resell them to you with a little bit of a markup. Although, okay, sometimes it's more than a little bit. These basically cost the same as Windows computers, and I found myself thinking, what the heck? Uh, we don't have to deal with the Microsoft licensing here. These actually should be cheaper than their Windows counterparts. but. I mean, starting here at 599, this is an i3, um, <laughs> and it goes up from there. And then with the features that I thought of putting into it, you know, more memory, more storage, um, it ended up coming out to around 1,000. So System76, I came very close to buying this 14-inch uh, lemur. I was ready to pull the trigger on it. And then I had an epiphany. Um, so <laughs> Uh, over here, this is uh, Newegg.com. Uh, Newegg, again, like I said, I have no affiliation with them. I just happen to buy a lot of uh, junk from them. And uh, and it seems to work. And uh, so I, I enjoy the deals that I get there. Now here, helpfully, Newegg is having their various sales and they're happy to advertise, oh, look at these wonderful little Windows laptops. Uh, Windows 10 or, you know, deals on old Windows 7 machines. Hmm, 699. It still doesn't seem like a, a really great deal, especially for an old laptop. I mean, come on, I, I can do better than that. So I did a little bit of digging, and here's what I was looking for. If you're not familiar with it, there are what are called uh, leased computers. What companies will do, you know, usually a big corporation, to insulate themselves from uh, uh, product obsolescence, instead of buying computers, they will lease them for you know, two, three years. At the end of the lease, th whoever it is that they lease them from sends them a new computer to replace it. And that way, they're not worried about always going out and chasing hardware. Their leaseor just keeps sending them more stuff. So when they're done with the laptop, it goes back into the secondary market and gets resold as a refurbished item. And uh, it'll be professionally refurbished by somebody, but because it's uh, been used, it commands a very low price. Now. I'm a I'm a believer in buying stuff refurbished, you know. As long as it works, I don't care about scratch and dents. I mean, none of my stuff is is flashy or or pretty. Um, so here, let's take a look. What could we find if we went looking for a refurb? Oh, look at this! Um, <laughs> come on, there we go, there we go. Um, <laughs> 
So this is the, what I came up with when I went looking, because I was looking for it had to be cheap, and it had to have the features I was looking for. So I found the HP EliteBook 8440p 14-inch laptop. Now get this, $180, and it comes with an i5, 2.4 gigahertz, 250 gig hard drive, 4 gigs of RAM. Oh, this stomps any Chromebook I would have gotten for that price. No problem. I don't care that it's used. I just care that it works. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be fancy at all. And here's very encouraging. It comes with Ubuntu. Now, Ubuntu, not exactly my favorite Linux distribution in the universe. But if the laptop works with Ubuntu, there are many Ubuntu derivative distributions that I do like. Linux Mint, for example, that uh, you know would pr uh, potentially run a whole lot nicer and look better on this laptop than Ubuntu would. So for $180, I took a risk and uh, I received uh, the laptop. Now I tried to put Linux Mint 17.2 KDE on it right away and it seemed to go just fine. But when it was time to reboot and run off the hard drive for the first time, I got a blank screen. And I started to wonder, uh-oh, was this a good idea? When it came uh, from the uh, refurbisher, by the way, it didn't come with regular Ubuntu, it came with Lubuntu. So I guess they wanted to make sure that I had a lightweight desktop, it didn't wouldn't tax this old computer too dramatically, but eh, I, I know Linux can take it, so I was going to go ahead and put Linux Mint on there, but for some reason it wasn't working. <sighs> so I came back here to this page, and I looked at the specifications, and I thought to myself, wow, this looks kind of spartan. There's got to be more to this thing than what you're telling me, because, I mean, there are lots of little nitpicky features, and notice they don't specify the processor. Granted, they do up here in the description, but I wanted to see all the technical specs not just the ones that they were listing here. So I went looking and there's a, a website called CNET.com which actually happens to be a great repository for what technical specifications should be for default configurations for laptops. And I found the 8440p with no problem. So here it is. When I looked it up, it notice it originally shipped with X7, uh, Windows 7 Professional or you could even downgrade it to XP Pro. Yeah. This is a corporate laptop, so that's why they go for that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, backward compatibility. And see, it has listings for all the various different um, variants uh, of this uh, model. But, you know, there are a few base items that remain consistent. You know, the processor is basically the same. And then here's something else that got my attention. Is notice these specifications are a lot more detailed than what we saw on Newegg. Ah, and then I found the solution as to why I was getting a blank screen when I was rebooting. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yes. Um, now, granted, it's only a 512 megabyte card, but for 180 bucks, my refurb laptop, unbeknownst to me, came with an NVIDIA uh, you know, GPU. I was like, what? Are you kidding? Score! You know, I wasn't expecting to have any kind of, uh, uh, you know, accelerated graphics of any kind in this thing, you know. Even if it's only a 512 for $180, I will take it. This will probably, you know, still be better than what you find in, you know, consoles these days. So, <laughs> time to play some Steam games on this. So, I thought to myself, if this laptop comes with an NVIDIA card in it, you know, NVIDIA is kind of known for having some issues with Linux, but that's in the past. Those issues have been solved, and, you know, let's thank... Uh, Linus Torvalds for that. He called NVIDIA out pretty publicly, and they were embarrassed enough that they did something about it. So thank you, Linus. And um, so I thought to myself, hmm, which Linux distribution would handle an NVIDIA GPU with no problems? And I thought of the perfect one. Okay, so this is the laptop that actually showed up. The HP EliteBook 8440p. Scratch and dent. <laughs> Notice the dents. <laughs> but that's okay. That's just cosmetic damage. Other than that, this is a really nice little laptop. I mean, we've got plenty of USB on here. Um, as a matter of fact, your focus. Come on, focus. And as you can see, it even has FireWire support. Again, you know, corporate laptop, unusual features. Um, and we have our analog in and out, although personally, I will never use this. And I will tell you why. This laptop supports uh, Bluetooth. So it's got Bluetooth integrated, and here's an example of a Bluetooth headset. 
And so this one will run for hmm, six, seven hours on a charge. And uh, oh, by the way, it's about $25. Well, it's got a microphone too. Uh, why is it so cheap? Well, uh, and I'll provide a link to this in the uh, description for this video in case you're interested in it. If you've ever tried looking up uh, wireless gaming headsets, they want to charge you a fortune because they assume gamers will pay extra. But this uh, wireless headset was geared towards people using phones and tablets because it's a Bluetooth device. So they just, you know, assume that those people were not going to pay as much. A little bit more competition in that market. Um, it's not the prettiest headset. It's it's pretty cheaply made, so you don't want to sit on it. Otherwise, it's kaput. Uh, we also have interesting things like eSATA. <laughs> So you can uh, attach a driver ray to this thing. It, it's kind of funny. So it's uh, if you want to snap in and download a whole crud load of data, this would be the way to do it. Um, and of course, we've got our obligatory network. I'm not sure if this is a gigabit or or just a 100 megabit. Um, but either way, I'm I'm fine with it. That, that it's okay because I don't use it. I use the, the wireless. And it even includes, see that little phone symbol? Uh, kids, if, you're, if you don't remember what these are, they're called modems, modulator, demodulator. So this can send faxes and connect to a dial-up and all kinds of other stuff. It basically has lots of options. Um, yeah, and your obligatory optical drive, again, which I never plan on using. But it's included anyways. So let's take a look and see what we have. All right, focus. Takes just a second here. And here, let's plug in a mouse because I hate glide pads. Glide pads are not my thing. Now, normally I wouldn't point a, a camera at a screen, but I wanted to demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are in fact dealing, uh, you know, you can see exactly which operating system I loaded and was successfully able to run here on this uh, HP Elite book. As I mentioned that it has an NVIDIA GPU. So there was one operating system in particular, which is an Ubuntu derivative that should be able to handle uh, NVIDIA GPUs with no problem, and that's Zorin. Zorin is one of those uh, flashy distributions of Linux. It's not just meant for beginners, it's meant for gamers. Um, <laughs> Zorin comes with uh, support for GPUs right out of the box. With other Linux distributions, you would install the distribution, then you'd have to go and find the NVIDIA GPU, load it, install it, configure it, blah, 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 blah. With Zorin, you just put in the USB key, fire it up, and this thing is going. I didn't have to install anything. I configured no drivers. They were all included with Zorin. So if you want the easiest possible um, setup, for your, um, if you plan to get this type of uh, notebook that I'm demonstrating here, whoops, I gotta remember my password. I, I favor long passwords, so the longer the better. I just have to remember them. Um, <laughs> so here we are, here's Zorin. Um, oh, by the way, since it has an NVIDIA GPU, I've already installed Steam and been playing video games on it. <laughs> and there are other things, like for example, there are special effects on the desktop, da, 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 multiple desktops. Um, so if you've never seen that feature before, Windows 10 recently ripped it off. Haha, <laughs> Microsoft having to copy Linux. <laughs> that tells you something now. If Microsoft has to copy it, hmm, do you want to settle for Microsoft's version? Okay, I, I can never resist uh, an opportunity to jab at Microsoft. Here, let's put up a writer document here. And uh, let's see, over here. I was working on a document recently because I'll go on to um, YouTube and see here are my various different tags and things that I copy and paste into the videos. So instead of having all these cluttered on a single screen and having a trip over themselves, now I just click here at the bottom of the screen and the screen flips to uh, whichever one it is that I need to use, but I can use all of the screen real estate at any given time. Or if you want to, I mean, if, if you're fine with the clutter you know there's no reason you you can't just uh, put it all on the same screen so here let's see we'll bring up mm, Zorin about this computer so if you're curious this is a Zorin 9 it's a long-term support release so this will be supported for years to come I picked the 64-bit uh, uh, version and so as you can see it's reading all the configurations for the computer so, yeah, you can have multiple things on the same screen, or you can have individual screens that you flip to. 
By the way, if you didn't know how to do this, the way you do it is you press and hold Control and Alt at the same time, click and drag with the left mouse button, and, and it's already set up. Normally, other Linux distributions will require you to download this uh, little goodie and set it up, but here in Zorin, everything is just included, and so it just goes. So if you don't want to learn about the innards of Linux, if you just want to be able to live in a world without Microsoft, and have a, a inexpensive laptop. I mean, come on, 180 bucks. This is <laughs> this is like crazy. By the way, I'm running on battery power right now. Um, let's see. Mm, and I still have an hour and 56 minutes left. So I, I forgot what it runs at at full charge. I think it runs for two hours and 30 minutes. Uh, but I could be wrong. And that's a refurb, a refurb, 180 dollars. And this laptop just stomps any Chromebook I would have bought for that price. Um, and I get all the bent, and plus I can game on it too from Steam. <laughs> it's a great deal. So if you're interested in an inexpensive Linux uh, notebook, uh, personally, I bought the HP Elite Book 8440p. Links for where you can buy this notebook, the headphones, or anything else, or how you can get Zorin will all be here. I'm also going to create a, a video here very shortly demonstrating how to install Zorin OS 9. Uh, so that uh, you can follow that step by step if you didn't know how to, you know, set it up. Enjoy and uh, see you next time here on Joe's Linux channel.